Feels nice to have that gavel again. Good evening and welcome for the first time in over 14 months to the live in-person meeting of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals. The day is June 17th, 2021. Uh, calling this meeting to order. Please ask you to silence your cell phones. I haven't had to say that in a very long time or mute yourself. Uh, I'll introduce the board at this time. At my far right, your far left is James Morse, who is an associate member of the board. Uh, you'll see an empty seat next to him. Uh, that is Scott Zielinski. He'll be joining us shortly. To my immediate right, and for the last time, Ken Foreman, who is our vice chair. My name is TJ Hurry. I'm the chair of the board. To my left is Bob Dugan, who is the board's clerk. To his left is Mary Berry, who is an associate member. Also with us tonight is Noreen Stockman and Ashley DeMello. Um, jump into the introductory remarks. Uh, zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the zoning bylaws for the town, and we consider requests for special permits, variances, and appeals as provided in the bylaws, which have been approved by town meeting, and the Attorney General's Office for the Commonwealth. All decisions the board makes are made through the public hearing process. The board's goal is to hear testimony from the applicants and also from the public and to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To begin each hearing, the clerk will read the public announcement of the hearing and then present any pertinent information from the file, such as referrals from town departments and summarizing correspondences to the board. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation and time may be extended by vote of the board. The board will then question the applicant and the public will be invited to comment as well. Public comment should be directed only at the project itself and we ask you to please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. Uh, public comment can include an opinion in favor or in opposition or it might just simply be a question about the nature of the project. The chair will limit discussion in the interest of time in the event that comments become repetitive. All members of the public wishing to speak should wait to be recognized by the chair and I'll ask you to come to the podium to the, my right, your left. We ask you to please state your name and address for the record. And we typically limit public comment to two minutes per person. Uh, we will then either close or continue the hearing when the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented by testimony and in the file to make a decision. By motion and vote of the board, the hearing will be closed. And the alternative, we may continue the hearing to a future date and time. After the hearing is closed, no more testimony may be taken. And as for board discussion and decision, uh, the board may then further discuss the project among ourselves and we would make a motion to either deny or, or approve. It would be made and voted upon. Uh, the motion will include a summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, which is a super majority, is required for approvals of motions on special permits, variances, and appeals. A split vote, such as a three to two vote, would be to failure to carry and would result in denial of the project. Under Massachusetts general law, if a special permit is denied, the applicant cannot return to the board for two years unless the project is substantially different. So turning to the agenda for the night, we do have public comment followed by one continuation and four new public hearings. Uh, so for public comment, this portion is meant for anything that is not on the agenda. So if anyone out there has anything to say on something that is not on the agenda tonight, uh, go ahead up to the podium. All right, seeing none, um, as the board's chair, I'm going to exercise a little bit of discretion here. Uh, Ken, I do have a couple of accolades to present to you on behalf right. of uh, several dignitaries, both local, state, uh, so up first, we do have something uh, from the governor's office that says, Ken Foreman, on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I am pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your 13 years of dedicated service as a volunteer for the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals and your service as chair and vice chair of the board. Uh, this 17th day of June in the year 2021, Signed our governor, Charles D. Baker, and Lieutenant Governor, Karen E. Polito. Wow, suitable for framing. <laughs> and we're not done yet. <laughs> wow, look at that one. Uh, this is from the state senate, its official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Ken Foreman 
in recognition of your many years of dedicated service to the town of Falmouth and be it known or be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the president of the Senate and attested and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk of the Senate. And of course that's signed by Senate President Karen Spiltka, clerk of the Senate Michael Hurley, and it was offered up by our state Senator Sue Moran. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. So you can all see. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. We do have another one here from the State uh, House of Representatives citation. Oh Be it hereby known <laughs> that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Ken Foreman in recognition of your many years of dedicated service to the town of Falmouth and your contributions to our entire community. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. That is signed by Ronald Mariano, Speaker of the House, and it was offered up by both of Falmouth's uh, state reps, Representative Dylan Fernandez and Representative Dave Vieira. <laughs> and last but not oh least. My God. Yeah. <laughs> On the local level, we have a uh, former chair of the ZBA, Matthew McNamara. Uh, he says, Dear Chairman Hurry, I have learned that Ken Foreman is stepping down from the Zoning Board of Appeals due to term limits. Through you, I wish to acknowledge and thank Ken for his extraordinary service to the town of Falmouth as a member of the board. It was a distinct privilege for me to serve as his colleague Ken's dedication, intelligence, and wit made me a better member. Very truly yours, Matt McNamara. <laughs> well, that's very nice. Maybe, maybe, maybe Matt will come back on the board. Maybe he will. I hear <laughs> there may be we could hope. There may be a few <laughs> vacancies, Matt McNamara, if you're out there listening. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. And there's there's more, but that'll be later. <laughs> <laughs> How many years in the planning board? It's about a decade on the planning board, yeah. I was I was using rough numbers from your CV online, so if the governor's <laughs> office got the numbers wrong, my apologies. No, I think you got it right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So we're moving on to the conservation commission now. <laughs> <laughs> Water quality, hopefully, if they appoint me. And 300 committee. Yeah. All right. Thank you recognize Ken's wife. Yeah, my wife took oh. photos. And Did she just jump out? Where is she? Where is she? Come back in. Coming for an encore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's good. She's not interested in the There's meeting, I can assure you. We're congratulating, <laughs> we're congratulating Ken's better half oh. yeah. for lending, you, lending him to us. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it was more like, get out of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that does it for public comment, I suppose. Moving on to the continuations. Uh, with this application, we do have a bit of a quorum issue uh, with Scott not available and uh, Ed Van Curen is not with us tonight. Uh, but Scott will be with us and we'll be able to carry on this later in the evening. So I'll make a motion um, to table this continuation application 50-20. Uh, until later in the evening when Scott arrives. So I'm second. All right. I make the motion. Ken seconds it. The voting members on this are myself, Ken. Uh, actually, no, it's it's a straight vote by all of us. So yeah. I made the motion. Ken seconded it. Uh, we'll do right to left. James? James Morse, aye. Ken? Ken Foreman, aye. TJ Hurry, aye. Robert Dugan, aye. Mary? Mary Berry, aye. All right. So it carries unanimously. Uh, Continuation is being tabled at the moment, and we'll continue straight down the list with our new hearings. And I just remembered something: we don't have to do a we don't need local roll call vote for vote. everything. No, no awesome. it's, it's, it's all very strange. <laughs> Love it. Let's <laughs> let the good times keep on rolling here. All right. Uh, so up first, we have new hearings starting at 6:30. Application 34-21. Griffin, 134 Gifford Street in Falmouth. It's requesting a special permit to raise and reconstruct the existing non-conforming detached garage. 
So application number 34-21, Martin Thomas Griffin, 40 Ocean Street, Quincy, Mass, has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3C of the Code of Falma to raise and reconstruct the existing non-conforming detached garage on subject property known as 134 Gifford Street, Falmouth, Mass. For referrals. From engineering. This application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Gifford Street is a public right of way and Barry Street is a private right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the public right of way. Any changes within the public right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. Three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property of butters or public rights of way. And four, we recommend the board add a condition that requires the addition of dry wells or stormwater infiltration measures for the new roof area at a minimum. Um, and there was an email in here regarding the revised plans. And we did receive a revised uh, site plan for the above reference property that did incorporate dry wells in the revised plan. Uh, conservation, conservation staff have no comments on the above reference because it's outside of CONCOM jurisdiction. Uh, water department, no comment. Assessors department, no comment. Planning, no comment. Uh, health has no issues with the project, providing there is no sleeping space above the garage, uh, which there is not on the plans. Uh, and no, uh, no correspondence for or against. All right, and for the applicant, do we have a Robert Blair in the audience today? All right. Anyone want to plan? <laughs> Physical plan, anyone? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, um, on behalf of the client, uh, my name is Robert Blair. Uh, the existing garage is in severe disrepair, and the client would like to uh, remove that structure and replace it with a two-car garage. There will be no living space uh, within the building. It's just going to be used for a garage. I understand that there's a special permit required due to setback requirements. Uh, the existing setbacks are four and five feet, respectively. Um, we are proposing to keep those setbacks as they are. Uh, but I do understand that there is a possibility. Um, you have a set of plans before you that show a 23 and a half by 22 foot garage, uh, two car garage. If there's a possibility um, to extend that uh, by an additional two feet to allow for uh, better safety uh, getting in and out of the car because the the garage as shown is is about as tight as you can make it with a uh, architectural plan and still have a uh, two cars available if that's possible within an administrative uh, uh, I don't know if it's a waiver but uh, it's it's still within the special permit that would increase the percentage of coverage above the 20%. So the existing plan that you have before you shows a 19.9% coverage. What I'm proposing is uh, what I had originally submitted, but uh, had, had not at the time realized that it was above 20%. So the additional size of two feet extra would amount to 21% coverage if that's allowable uh, and acceptable to the board. If not, we will uh, proceed, hopefully, with your permission with the 19.9%. Uh, All right. Anything else, or do you want to turn it over to board questions? Yeah, any, any questions, uh, please. Sounds good. James, anything? Just to be clear, your non-conformities as to the set, the uh, setbacks are not going to increasing. You're just adding two feet, essentially, on one side of the building. Yes, sir. 
uh, the proposal was for a um, uh, 24 by 26, I believe, which would add an additional 100 square feet. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, James. Come. I think I'm reading the plan. It says 23 and a half. That's the plans you have before you, correct? Yeah. I mean, I guess what concerns me is why not move the building to the east one foot and then conform on all sides? I wanted to try to do that, and uh, given the lot size and the fact that they just put in a brand new septic system, uh, I didn't want the driveway to impede on the uh, septic system at all, so it became difficult to try to angle the building and still have it fit on the lot without asking for additional uh, forgiveness on the setbacks. I wanted to keep the setbacks the way they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that was, that was my question. All right, Paul? Uh, so the question on that is, so do you have a plan um, already prepared with the new dimensions on it that you could I submit? Do. And I had a question regarding the fencing. So on the on the, the engineer's plan, it shows that the there's a fence on the property that's actually on the property next door. Is that the, pro the fence for this property, or is that? That's the existing fence. And is it owned by this property? I believe so. Uh, so normally when that happens, we would ask that the fence actually be moved so that it's encompassed on that property. Is there put, it, put it right on the property yeah, line? Yeah, there's enough room for that. I, it won't affect any of the setbacks. I just that yeah, was just so it's on your property. And we don't have a, a situation. Right. With that's that. just how it was recorded by the surveyor. Um, so I guess my my question would be: instead of having to do this administratively, if it was possible um, to go over the information this evening and he could actually submit an updated plan, we could actually. Or if it's acceptable, you can just vote that he submit that, and I'll make sure. Per per revised plans, works. if we're well, if he has one. the plan, he could submit it here now. I don't, th the problem is the plan that I have shows the dimensions, but it doesn't have all the rest of the information on it, like the um, dry wells and everything else that was, that was asked for. The original plan I scrapped because it was over the allowable square footage, so that's how I came up with the plan that's before you. I do have architectural plans that show the original dimensions, but without all of the other information that you require. And when, if, if that was enlarged, the extra two feet, does that have any issues with distances to septic or anything? No. Uh, the driveway would not change. It would just be angled in towards the entrance of the garage. Anything else, Paul? That's the only question. Mary? No questions. Mm -hmm. um, if it helps. Sorry. Can I? Oh, no, no, what do you have there? This is the plan that shows the larger dimensions. Oh, sure. This will be, uh, Bob, can we stamp this in? Yeah, <laughs> All right. God only knows what date that goes on it, huh? No. Ooh. You guys are on? All right. My apologies, you said that plan shows the, is it the revised? It, it shows the enlarged uh, footprint of the garage, but it does not show all the other details such as the uh, drip edge, drainage, and dry well information that was required. So, so when you did the, um, because it doesn't show where the setbacks or anything are, so. The setbacks are the same. So you still have 1.8 on the side of the garage? No, the, the, the side of the garage, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where you're looking at 1.8. So it should be four feet on the, from the drainage. Uh, side and five feet in the back, I believe. 
So he says he's using the same footprint. And are you saying that the existing, so the existing structure doesn't does have, not have an it just overhang? Goes, it just goes, it's like a shed, so it just kind of goes flat on one side. Okay. So there isn't an overhang. So, I mean, you may be able to do this and just move it over so it meets the same sideline, but. Plus the two feet on top of that if we were. Yeah, I mean, I. If we were willing to grant that. I don't have any measurement on it, so. Yeah, that's that's my fault because the surveyor, when they when they took the original dimensions, since there was no overhang, they took it to the the edge of the building. Yeah, and it, it, I mean it can happen. I mean a mistake can happen. It's just that uh, we, we would need to see something updated that actually shows the uh, um, the dimensions of to the overhang, and then the new footprint size, and then if there was a change to the driveway. So it might just be cleaner if we get those revisions. It's just e it, should, it, it would be easier if we could just get revisions on your new plan. Okay. With the lot coverage, asking for the to go over the 20%, which you would need, uh, and then showing the setback from the overhang of the new of the new structure. Okay. For the sideline. I guess the question I have is, does anyone? Besides me, feel like well, if they can expand the size of the garage by two feet, they ought to be able Just to move improve it. the setback a little bit. Yeah. You know, because the argument was that you didn't want to make move the building because uh, it, it would encroach on the septic, but yet you can make it two feet wider. Yeah, the the two feet is probably not an issue. If I have to go four feet, it might. Start. No, but w but can you improve it a little? Is the question because if we're granting you more lot coverage, it would be nice to all get some improvement to the setback nonconformity, uh, even a foot or two, you know, on either side. It is. It, I mean, I visited the site. It's kind of crammed in the corner there. <laughs> uh, would it be okay to keep the existing setback and because, since we're considering? Uh, shortening it because of the overhang if we can just keep the existing setback at four feet and five feet it's four on the side and five in the back right uh, but that would if we kept the existing setbacks including the overhang would that be acceptable and may and still make it bigger if that's well, so, acceptable so that's to my, the board that's where yeah. I'm having just a a little touch of heartburn. So the, the, the but you, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just saying, because you know, you're, you're going, now you're going to the point where you need a special permit for lot coverage, as well as, so you're actually increasing your nonconformity, rather than, you know, if we could say, well, you've improved the setback nonconformity, and, but now you need a special permit for the uh, lot coverage. I mean, I don't want to overcomplicate kind of it because off. I know the owner is anxious to replace what's there and uh, appease some of the complaints from the abutters um, because of. Let, let me throw this one out there because I'm not hearing much opposition about giving another two feet. If you can improve that side yard, that side yard setback from four to five, would that? I'm, the board I'm would sure be that. Willing to give you that extra two feet? I'm sure that would be. Easily done. What? So, so, so you mentioned there was an issue. What was the issue with the abutters? Oh, just the owners receiving complaints about uh, vermin oh. <laughs> entering and exiting the because uh, it's falling apart. It's falling yeah. apart. So, and they, he just renovated the house, so he would like to have the entire property. Uh, you know, finished as it were yeah All right. anyway that's just my two cents it, it doesn't seem like changing the width is going to actually come closer to the septic system it would be the depth I, I, I didn't think so so it, it I mean it should be easy enough just to move the building over yeah. so what if what if he improves that side yard to five and then we give him the two feet I don't looking for a consensus yeah Everyone's yeah all right. yeah Harry, okay with that and just show it on a plan all right with the understanding with the 
coverages and right with, with the understanding of that side yard setback at that five feet that would be at the overhang not the yeah so you just figure the five foot setback from the overhang so the, the five is the rear which doesn't have an and overhang oh well, in, 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 improving the four yeah so what I, I guess what we're saying is improve the side yard setback going from four to five Right, so there that, were that five foot setback includes the point from the overhang. Right, so the, the overhang would be probably 10 to 12 inches. So, right, right. All right, so we'd be looking for revised plans to show that. And I'm Can not you show the lot coverage and then just show, um, you could show on the new revised plan, it's easy enough that you're uh, relocating the side fence onto the property. Sounds good to me. Is that, that okay? You're the boss. All right, no, well. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm guessing they're fairly easy revisions for you to do. Could you have a quick turnaround? Um, I'll accept the site plan part. If, if I have to go back to the surveyor, that's going to cost the owner some more money. And, uh, I'd prefer not to have to do that if I don't have to. So, so even if we did this administratively, we'd have to have a site plan? Yeah, they'll need it for the building. We'd have, we'd physically have to have a site. Do you plan. need it certified? Okay. So continue to date. Clerk, were there any objections filed that we can let them know about that? Uh, I didn't hear. Back? Well, I don't think there were. Were there? Just want to be clear. No, no, no there was nothing no, in the file. The only, the only mention. Haven't had public comment. Yes. You know, was the problem. presenter so? Maybe someone out there harbored some vermin <laughs> resentment. <laughs> Uh, Noreen, I was trying to get them in quicker rather than later, yeah. but we do I have I guess the goals. question would be how long it might take to get the site plan for picking a date, or do you want to approve it pending receipt of the updated plan? You could do that. Do what? You know, basically approve it pending receipt of the so the receipt of the plan, that could all be done administratively. Sure. So per revised plans, if we were to vote on right. it tonight. Okay. And then just get it off your agenda. Right. And, and then what do we do, Noreen, for, um, for findings on law coverage or anything? We just leave that, mention that that will be updated by the administrator? Right. So you can put in, he has provided for you the law coverage by structures, and then we will just add whatever the law coverage by structure parking would be with the assumption that it doesn't exceed the 40% that's allowed in the district. All right, I'm comfortable with that. How's everyone? That's fine. Yep. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion to close the hearing now? So a motion. Oh, wait, do you want to get any public or just think, have you asked for a public? I did. Oh, you did? There was none. Oh, um, you have to point vote voting oh okay um, if I didn't already do it then obviously Mary and James are voting members on this so we have a full full quorum full five member quorum now can we close the hearing we can so motion to close all right. second. motion to close by Bob second by James all those in favor aye. 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 hearing is closed no more testimony may be taken that would be the board's pleasure so motion to approve with conditions Motion approved with second. conditions made by Bob and second by Ken. Excellent. Findings? 240-3C, uh, 240-216, not substantially more detrimental. Um, we should put that the current structure is in uh, disrepair and needs replacement. Uh, testimony by applicant was that the, uh, and shown by the current plot plan, is that the, uh, the side fence is on the neighbor's property and that will be relocated onto this property. Um, applicant asked to modify the size of the garage by two feet. Um, that revised plan would have to be submitted to the administrator for review and sign off. And the board is um, agreeable to that uh, as long as they increase the sideline dimension to the overhang to five feet. You'll have to add the findings in of the 
lot coverages or building coverages because I don't have any. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Dugan. Yep. The five feet, the current setback is five feet in the rear and four feet on the side. Did you want so the side yard would be five? Side yard will go to five feet. Okay. Uh, we can put if we're finding the dry wells are shown on the plan and they will also have to be on the revised plan for the new size. Uh, and the testimony was that the structure is just for use as a garage and storage. Uh, there'll be no habitable space. The referral by the health department uh, that has an adequate septic is also based that there will be no habitable space. And that whatever our revised plans are that are submitted will have to be the same plan that's submitted to the building department. Uh, also finding that there is no uh, heat in the garage or plumbing. All right, conditions? Uh, will be per the revised plans to be submitted to the zoning administrator. Uh, fence to be relocated onto subject's proper own property. Improved westerly setback to five feet. Yeah, improve the mm -hmm. westerly to five feet. From the drip edge. From the, the uh, drip edge overhang. Be clear. Uh, property not to have, uh, the garage not to have any habitable space, uh, heat or plumbing. We'll have dry wells, so that might have to be revised on the plan, depending on what the dimensions of the garage are. All right. Anything else? And then we got the fence. Yes. So it'll be relocated. All right. Anything else for findings or conditions? Uh, and then the only condition would be they'll have to update their uh, lot coverage in public park and yep. structure parking and paving. All right. I think that just about does it. All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and seconded by Ken. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Blair, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Okay, up next we have application 35-21, Dominguez, 134 Carriage Shop Road in East Falmouth. Requesting a special permit to allow an accessory structure or therapy building exceeding 900 square feet in size. M M uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, point of order before uh, Board Member Dugan reads um, referrals and other things into the record. Sure. Are, are you the uh, re applicant's representative? Uh, Michael Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, representing the applicant. I, I was uh, asked to assist in the presentation of the special permit application that was prepared by the applicant, uh, Mr. Dominguez, Michael Dominguez, who's in the office, I mean in the uh, audience. You've um, reviewed his property on two other occasions for two other special permits, and I think there's been a miscommunication in the application that was filed before you to the point that I think um, <clears throat> it's not necessary. And I'd like to tell you why, and I'd like you to make a finding, if you agree, um, that no special permit is necessary. Okay. Uh, Noreen, would we still have to read it into the record, or is because we're kind of operating outside the scope of this yes, hearing? Yeah, we could make a finding best to do it. that, and then you can withdraw vote if, to determine if whichever we, you want to do. I right. just don't didn't want you to read referrals and everything that are not applicable if there's no special permit pending, because I believe that there's no special permit necessary for this. So reading referrals that are unrelated to a. But we also need to read. We need to read the hearing into the sure, record. Sure, that I, I would agree makes sense. Yeah. yeah, they could withdraw. Right, because you, you could just do a withdrawal. Yeah, but we, we, we were told we needed a special permit, so we want to have something in the record that says we don't need a special permit. And I well, you, you'll have that if you have a withdrawal, right? If, you, if, you're, if this board concurs, yes. Right, okay. All right, so... All right, so if I read it in, I'm well, going to have to do the referrals, yeah, but well, even though we know they may not be applicable. Right. So I'll just, I'll just read it and open it up. All right. Um, application 35-21, Michael W. Dominguez, 134 Carriage Shop Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals 
for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3G of the Code of Thalma to allow an accessory structure exceeding 900 square feet in size on subject property known as 134 Carriage Shop Parodies Falmouth. Uh, for referrals. Uh, from engineering, uh, engineering department reviewed the plot plan for 134 Carriage Shop Road, sheet one of two for the above reference project dated September 27, 2017, last revised 513, 2021. The last revision of the plan shows the cobbles and riprap mentioned in our 512, 2021 review. As previously stated, these objects may require a license from the select board or a permit from engineering to remove them. We defer to the Zoning Board of Appeals that this matter should be cleared up where conditions should be included in any approval. Uh, also for engineering, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Carriage Shop Road is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. Three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property or butters or public rights of way. Four, there was cobble curbing and riprap installed in the town right of way that may require a license from the select board based on the aerial photos. It appears that this work in the right of way was done between March 2017 and April 2018, and we have no records of a permit. We refer to the board if a license should be applied for within the select board for approval or if the condition should be included to obtain the license. Another option is to remove the structures from the right of way. This would require a permit from engineering uh, to do the work in the right of way. Dry wells are shown in the plan as we typically recommend. Six, we do not have an address and record for the attached accessory apartment shown in the plan. We consulted with the Falmouth Fire Rescue and they indicated that the garage and proposed building should also have the addresses assigned. Please inform the applicant that they should contact the engineering division to assign the addresses prior to filing for a building permit. Addresses will aid in, in an emergency response. For reference, these will be the addresses for this parcel, Main House 134, Accessory 134A, Garage 134, Building 2, uh, Physical Therapy 134, Building 3. Seven, we recommend the following condition be included, which is Section 991, affixing of legible numbers, time limit for performance. Uh, health has no issue with the project. The therapy room is not going to be used for any sleeping purposes. Our health wrote that the current house is assessed as a four bedroom. The accessory structure would be a fifth bedroom on the property since the lot is greater than 50,000 square feet. An AI system would not be required for the accessory bylaw for properties in Coastal Point Overlay. And again, he said he wouldn't consider the physical therapy as an additional bedroom. From Con, Con, Com, Com has no comment outside the jurisdiction. Fire Department has no issues with the project was drawn. No comment from the assessors. No comment from the water. No comment from planning, uh, no letters for or against. All right, Mr. Barcelli. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, so um, just by, by way of background, Mr. Dominguez applied for a uh, building permit to build a, an accessory structure on his property that would be used for the purposes of a uh, therapy pool and related appurtenances in the building, such as a small kitchenette. Um, when he applied for the building permit, it was recommended that he verify that there is no need for a special permit. Uh, and through whatever miscommunication, I, th I think there was some miscommunication because he um, was instructed to apply under 240-38. And if you read 240-38, which I've highlighted a section of here, um, special permit uses in it, outlines them specifically, he was asked to file under 24038G. And, then, and that is for the following accessory uses. Garage space for more than two cars. If the footprint of the garage is more than 900 square feet. So what we, uh, what we have here is a 1,200 square foot accessory building. It's not a garage. I know of no provision in the zoning bylaw that requires a special permit for an accessory building. This is not a garage. So that's, I think there was some miscommunication, and unless someone can clarify or, or which. No, so I, otherwise. so I went through the bylaw book too, and I don't see where we have a bylaw that even allows us to give a special permit for a therapy building. All right. So for that reason, I don't think the referrals, I think they're moot, and the, that this is um, perhaps, if. It, it's a stretch even a modification of a previous special permit that was issued. Two special permits were issued 
Um, and if I can just share the drawing with you. So just a quick question, Mr. Brazelli. Is is the building commissioner saying he won't give a permit without a special permit? No. He was giving Mr. Dominguez a alert that he might want to check so he's not surprised. They have they're ready to sign off on the building permit. So um, if if you look at the plan, this is your entire file that Ashley was nice enough to share with me. But within the file, my site plan, which is at the very back. property is at 134 Carrot Shop. You you, re, you reviewed, or well, this board did, two special permits, one for an accessory apartment in this building, which is um, approved, and one for a modification that allowed for an addition to a, uh, a 20 by 56 uh, addition to this garage. And Mr. Dominguez operates his business out of this facility. He lives here. His family, his mom, who's in the audience, lives nearby. Um, there's uh, several neighbors in support here tonight, but this is all, I think, unnecessary because the proposed PT building, which is for his grandson, uh, which is an accessory building and not a garage, doesn't need a special permit in my mind. So uh, I think since we went through the time, energy, and effort, and money to do this, we should at least get a finding or a vote that you would agree that no special permit is necessary. And we withdraw our application. And hopefully we should then be able to get a uh, building permit issued because the zoning department should be able to sign off. All right. Let's see if we have any questions for Mr. Bracelli. James? No, at this time. All right. Ken? No, I think he's correct. All right. Bob? No. Mary? Yeah. All right. I, I do have a question just for the administrator. So, um, How do we do something like this? I mean, is it okay just to make a finding that, that we don't have a, there is no bylaw that allows us to give a special permit for a therapy bill? I mean, I understand why they need it and I think they should have it. I'm, I'm wondering if the building commissioner did it just because there was a mention of a kitchenette, which I know isn't gonna be used as a living space, but because they have a apartment special permit already on property, does the, would the current building, as proposed, cause any issues with the accessory apartment bylaw? Or can the building department just put a condition on it that is, they usually don't condition? That's a good question. Um, I think if you agreed that this does not require a special permit, what would be transmitted to the building department would be essentially that statement. Um, but I think that the expectation would be that if the building department issues the permit and the zoning board is not involved, that they would essentially stand in your stead <coughs> as, you know, and they would say, okay, this is already an accessory apartment on the property, so therefore, this cannot be converted to an accessory apartment because it would violate the bylaw. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just asking how that actually gets in there so that if they don't have a neighbor down the road that says you have a structure that was put up that actually meets conditions of the accessory apartment bylaw, just so okay. they don't have a problem down the road if somebody complains. Right. So I, I think what Mr. Borselli is suggesting to you is that this does not fall under as a physical therapy building. Right. And so I think if, if you agree with that, your finding would be that would support that you understand that this use is for a physical therapy structure and that it's not going to be an accessory apartment. And that that's what would go into the right. record. The, the floor plans clearly show what the uses mm -hmm. are. They do. Oh, sure. And the building department has the floor plans. Still, a finding doesn't hurt. No, it, it just protects us. Yeah. And you. All right. I'll start with the board for now. Yeah. Just maintaining formalities of the hearing. If uh, public comment, if there's any question, comment, or concern from members of the public. Anyone at all? All right. Not seeing anyone. Back to the board then. 
I think we all seem to be in agreement here. Yeah, so I guess we would um, make a motion just to make a finding that this use is for physical therapy, accessory structural. Uh, not being presented, it would be used as an accessory apartment, and as such, we don't have um, any authority to give a special permit. All right, I like that. Um, and what, how about saying no special permit is required? Yeah, and as such, no special permit is required. All right, uh, the voting members on this project, I'm going to appoint Mary and James. I know it sounds funny because there's five of us here, but I think I do need to say that. Sure. Uh, I need to close the hearing first. Move to close. Second. All right, motion to close made by Ken, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. How would the board like to proceed? So go with just uh, the board would just make a finding again that this structure, that this use uh, for physical therapy structure, they're applying for the use as a physical therapy uh, structure, not as an accessory apartment, um, as such. Uh, or a garage. Yeah, or a garage. Or a garage. Which is Good. what 38G is about. Good point. And, you know, the elevations clearly show it's not a garage. Um, the floor plans show that. And as such, uh, would now qualify for a special permit. Very good. All right. So, Bob, you were making that motion. And was there a second? Yes, yeah, second. Second by Ken. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mr. Purcelli, Appreciate thank you. It. All right, up next, we have application 36 21, Mooney III, trustee, 188 Gansett Road in Woods Hole, requesting a special permit to allow the existing non conforming boathouse to be constru reconstructed and allow a detached garage with living space above in the front yard more than 50 feet from the property line. So application number 36-21, James F. Mooney the third trustee, uh, care of Amon Clower LLP, 39 Town Hall Square, Falmouth, Mass. is applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-68A8 and 240-3C of the Code of Falmouth to allow the existing non-conforming boathouse be reconstructed and allow a detached garage with living space above in the front yard more than 50 feet from the front property line. The subject property is 188 Gansett Road, Woods Hole. For referrals. Come on in, Scott. Sorry, folks. No worries. You saved your space. Thank you. <laughs> Order. So from engineering, this application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public oh, utilities. Gansett Road <laughs> is a private right of way in this area. Two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. Three, project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property or butters or public rights of way. Four, dry wells are proposed for the roof stormwater mitigation. Five, we recommend the following condition be included. Upon completion of construction, the applicant shall post the address for this residence per sec subsection 991, a fixing of legible numbers. Time limit for compliance. Uh, six, where, where this project falls in the jurisdiction of CONCOM, we recommend deferring to CONCOM for stormwater management and erosion controls. Uh, from CONCOM, CONCOM recently closed the hearing for the request to raise the existing single-family dwelling and to construct and maintain a new single-family dwelling with an attached garage, new Title V sewage disposal system, in-ground swimming pool, spa, pool deck, cabana, boathouse, terraces, uh, parking court, retaining walls, walkways, turf paths, fire pit, uh, to conduct invasive species management, install restoration and mitigation plantings, and for all associated clearing, excavating, grading, utilities, Drainage and landscaping at the above reference property and order of conditions for the project has not yet been issued and will be discussed during the Conservation Commission's hearing of 519. I assume we might have an update on that.
uh, from historical applicant file with HC. The HC decision and approved plans will be emailed to you. This was dated May 4th, 21. And they did uh, submit the certificate of appropriate, appropriateness of 188 Gansett Road um, with their information there. Uh, from the water department, the existing water main and services must be on the plan. The proposed detached garage with living space must have a separate entrance. Uh, I'm sorry, separate service, not entrance. The existing lot has a meter pit that feeds the site, which will have to be abandoned. A new or rebuilt home will need to have a new meter installed inside the home. Uh, from the health department, a permit for health still needs to be obtained for the new septic. Perk test performed on 321.21, to, so final designs may still be in process. Since the property will have more than eight rooms, Designer must use the following underlying section of Title V bedroom definition when calculating the design, and he gave what the specifications are. It appears that there are 10 to 11 rooms in the house. Had difficulty determining whether the two rooms in the lower level are mechanical or habitable. Um, therefore, the applicant would be looking at a five bedroom septic system. The fire department has no issues with the project as drawn. Uh, no comment from the assessors. And I would just make a note, we can check with the CONCOM, but their referral to us uh, mentioned an attached garage, but for some reason doesn't mention a detached. Uh, there are, is a letter in support uh, from a James Ware, 90 East Bear Hill Road, Harvard, Mass. Please see the attached letter in support. Uh, to the members of the zoning board, I'm writing in favor of the proposed plans by James and Lisa Mooney to construct a new house, garage, and pool, and to reconstruct the bathhouse at 188 Gansett Road. I urge the members of the board to give their approval for the plans. My family had owned the house and grounds of 188 Gansett Road for over 90 years, and we continue to own the land both to the north of this property, 192 Gansett Road, owned by James Ware and, Sha and Sharon McCarthy, and to the south of the property, 186 Gansett Road, owned by Marion Ware and Mark Louisel. After our sale of 188 Gansett Road to the Moonies last year, they have kept me informed of their plans and I am in full agreement with their ideas and concepts for keeping some of the same features that are shown in the bathhouse and in designing a house, garage, and grounds that will fit well in the surrounding landscape. The current main house and bathhouse were built in 1920s are in need of substantial repair. The main house still has 90-year-old plumbing and electrical wiring and fuse boxes, so it makes a total sense to replace the house which will allow the Mooney family to thoroughly enjoy it for the next 100 years as we have done for the last 93. A garage with living quarters makes sense and is in keeping with the main, many houses on Gansett Road. We are fully supportive of this change. The bathhouse has been part of this property for the entire 90 plus years and has survived hurricanes in 1938, 1944, 1954 Carol, 1960 Donna, and 1991 Bob, as well as numerous other storms over the years, but it has suffered from the storms and has occasionally been part partly underwater, as it still has much of the same roof and floor joists that it had for those 90 years. It would be important to make substantial renovations to ensure it survives future storms. I hope you will consider their project favorable and give your approval. And then there is a letter from Marianne Ware and Mark Louisel. Sony Board of Appeals, we're writing in favor of James and Lisa Mooney's plan to raise the large house at 188 Gansett. Uh, we are the owners of 186 Gansett, which abuts the property. The Moonies have presented a plan, which is well-designed house with a pool and cabana, which fits well within the property. They also plan to restore the bathhouse, which is situated down near the harbor. We approve of both construction plans. We also think it is an idea whose time has come to tear down the main house. The house was owned by, many, uh, by my family for over 90 years. Electric and plumbing are totally antiquated and in severe decay. It would be extremely difficult and expensive uh, to bring them up to code. Although I have a strong sentimental attachment to the mansion, I recognize the time has come to tear it down. It is no longer viable in this day and age. Yep, and that's all we have. All right, thank you, Bob. And for the applicant, we have Attorney Ahmet. Attorney Ahmet, welcome, and good to see you in person. Well, uh, it's a mutual feeling. It's uh, fun to be 
to be here and thank you uh, for what you've done over the past year and uh, for your service today. Uh, I would just like to clarify uh, which is the uh, five member board that's. Sure. Uh, and I got ahead of myself there. Thank you, Attorney Yaman. So uh, voting members, since Scott is here, voting members will be Bob, myself, Ken, Scott, and I'll give this one to you. Might I suggest since, well, in, unless we, you expect, do you expect us to make a decision today? Let's, let's suspect. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll give it to James, and Mary will be on the next one. How's that? All right. Yes, thank you very You're much. Welcome. Um, so like, to, I'd sorry, like to even if we don't, Mary will, she's present, so she'd be yeah. able to vote. Sorry, go ahead, Attorney Amit. I, I'd like to thank Ashley DeMello for her help in uh, making me look like I know what I'm doing by uh, with these um, uh, presentation and helping to load this into your system. Um, this uh, special permit concerns uh, one of the many, many properties in Falmouth that are uh, unique so and uh, uh, special. Um, and this is uh, right there with them. Um, the uh, property um, is, as you can see, outlined in yellow, uh, just about at the end of uh, Agansett Point. Um, Quisset Harbor is uh, on one side to the east of the property, and Buzzards Bay is uh, uh, to the uh, west. The uh, house in question um, was built in 19, 1925. It's a, a summer house. It has um, more than 17,000 square feet of space, close to 9,000 square feet of finished space, some 12 bedrooms, and it's in terrible condition. The historical commission agreed that it was impractical to, uh, to try to rebuild it um, and uh, agreed that in its certificate of appropriateness that it could be um, removed and the Historical Commission has approved the plans that uh, are before you uh, tonight. And speaking of the plans, I should recognize that uh, uh, Hutker Associates of Falmouth, H Hutker Architects rather, um, designed the house. Charles Orr, one of the architects uh, at Hutkers, is here. And also here is Mike McGrath of Holmes & McGrath, whose uh, uh, firm has done the site plans that, um, that you'll see. So this portion of the assessor's map shows the location of the property. Um, this is an aerial photograph from the town um, that shows the uh, house that would be uh, torn down. A notice to the uh, right in the picture is the uh, existing uh, pier that's uh, probably as old as that house and is licensed by the, uh, the state. And um, at the landward edge of that pier, there is what's called a boathouse. There aren't any boats in it. It's really a boating house. It's a place to keep life jackets and supplies. There are some changing rooms. There's water service to it. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty much um, in disrepair ins inside it. And uh, the intention is to um, replace, uh, reconstruct it as needed. It may be possible that some of the structure can be um, used. Windows would be replaced, um, the siding, and um, so on. But uh, we don't know yet whether any of the structure can be. Uh, can be salvaged. So since it's an accessory structure, we're asking for uh, permission to uh, reconstruct it just as it is. It is a historic thing. It's a wonderful um, feature um, on the harbor. Um, this is just a, a picture of the land court uh, stamped uh, plan that the planning board endorsed that uh, combined this property with a separate vacant two acre parcel that could have been a second house the two lots were merged um, to create a single uh, four-acre lot. Um, you can see that the uh, existing house is non-conforming because it uh, is right up to the property line where it um, touches, it has in the past been connected to the 
house that's on uh, lot 91, but the houses have been on separate lots since at least 1974. Um, I'm gonna show you first uh, the site plan that um, <coughs> shows what's gonna go on on, on the lot. You see there's uh, um, the main, the new house. Um, there's a swimming pool and a cabana to the west. There's a proposed two-car garage with living space above it um, in this area. Um, and it's between the house and the, the street that runs through the lot. Uh, and it's a very unusual situation to have um, a plan that has uh, been endorsed now in 1974 and again in 1988 and again in 2020 by the planning board using this, um, the way that runs through a lot as the, as the frontage. But the land court has accepted that and that's been the situation um, for uh, many, many, many years. Um, the subdivision was laid out in 1920. Um, so we're here for a special permit, not so much because of the house, because the new house, unlike the existing house, uh, will be conforming with respect to setbacks. In fact, it will be 20 feet from the property line because that's a requirement in the uh, Gansett neighborhood. Um, it's also a house that's, uh, though of good size, is uh, substantially smaller than the existing house. But the garage, uh, is, be as I said, between the house and the street. Um, there, that would make it being in a front yard. It's 57 feet away from the street. Um, the zoning bylaw allows an accessory structure in a front yard, not closer th to the street than 50 feet, provided that the uh, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals grants a special permit. So that's what really got us thinking we needed a special permit or should get one for a project like this before we start construction. And then we also realized, well, we are or may reconstruct this uh, boathouse. It is an accessory structure, and reconstructing an accessory structure um, requires a special um, permit, so we've added that to the, um, to the application. Now let me go back to uh, quickly uh, to that um, rendering of the, of the house. It's going to be a magnificent um, um, set of structures. It's broken up into smaller pieces uh, to uh, uh, reduce the impact of it and to um, evoke the idea of a, of a farm with uh, multiple farm structures. Um, the structures you see, the, uh, except for the garage in this photo, they are all connected, but they, they uh, appear from this angle almost as if they're separate structures. This uh, building to the ridge is going to be a little less than 29 feet tall. The existing house is 35 feet uh, tall. So this is actually uh, um, smaller also in, in height. Um, so we have two things really to talk about, the um, so-called boathouse or bathhouse and the, um, the garage. So just because it's in the order that we have them here, let's talk about this uh, little structure. That's the um, um, boathouse looking towards the water. Um, maybe you've been to the site, maybe you've even looked inside it and you uh, would know it's in poor condition. The proposal, um, is outlined um, on these plans which are annotated and just uh, say there will be new shingles, uh, new windows, uh, new trim detail to match the existing. The only change in appearance uh, that's uh, required is that uh, that railing uh, on the roof deck uh, needs to be modified a little bit um, in order to comply with uh, today's uh, uh, safety codes, building codes. And that may actually be uh, taken care of by putting a, um, a plexiglass um, uh, or, or glass 
uh, barrier on one side of it just to, um, just for safety purposes, and I think maybe uh, it's going to be slightly higher, again, just to meet code, and that's the only reason for that change. Um, so there isn't too much to that. I don't think you'll have any problem with the reconstruction of, of uh, this um, rather interesting and very attractive boathouse. That's a view of it from the water. So, so the, the uh, garage. Um, in the front yard, it's a two car garage, it's not oversized. On the first floor, on the second floor, there is a guest bedroom, um, a guest bathroom, and a little area uh, kind of tucked over in this area for uh, maybe a pantry. Uh, but this is not uh, intended to be a, any kind of an apartment. Um, if that's what the owner wanted, we would have applied for an accessory apartment. Um, he just wants a guest house. Uh, so that's what's inside uh, the building. That's the exterior of it. Um, we made the height of it just a little bit below 22 feet because that's what's allowed by right. It's uh, 21 feet, 11 and a half inches. 22 feet high is, as I said, allowed by right, but on a lot of two acres or more, you can get a special permit to be up to 25 feet high. Uh, we thought it was easier just to uh, make it uh, conform without needing uh, to add that to our special permit requests. Uh, the materials will be uh, uh, matching the, uh, the house. Um, So that's what we're proposing. Um, is the um, as you know from the letters, the neighbors are in, in favor of it, including uh, um, the wares who will travel through uh, this property uh, on their right of way. Um, so they're in, in favor. It. There's simply no adverse impacts whatsoever uh, that would outweigh um, the benefits of approving this. We're going to be replacing a failed um, a, a series of cesspools for septic with a Title V system. The whole project has now been approved with issuance of an order of conditions by the uh, Conservation Commission. The septic permit has already been issued by the um, Board of Health. And um, again, as you know, the uh, Historical Commission has approved um, these, these plans. Um, we spent a lot of time in the past uh, weeks uh, talking to the Water Department about uh, their referral. Uh, they wanted to have a separate service uh, to the uh, house and the uh, plans were revised. And these plans that uh, you've received do show um, uh, the separate service running right in here uh, to the garage. They wanted a separate service to the garage. And there is a uh, email re uh, to the board received um, by the board that uh, from the water department that says their concerns um, have been addressed. Um, so I think I'll stop because uh, uh, I don't think we need more um, to approve this project, um, but uh, <coughs> Either I or McGrath or Orr would be happy to uh, answer any questions that you uh, might have. Sounds good. Thank you, Attorney Yamat. We'll see if we do have any questions. James, do you want to start us off? No, it looks like a very nice project. I don't have any questions. Very good. Scott? Um, just a couple. Uh, the pool, did, did you mention whether it was salt or uh, freshwater pool? I actually don't know, but I bet uh, Charles Arno. Okay, so, so I'm imagining that the uh, the drainage facility that's uh, that's 12 feet deep because it's gravity drained. That's why it's so deep over there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Ken. Yes, yeah, so Bob, you mentioned there's a pantry in in the uh, garage. Is is there a cooking facility there, or is it just? Uh, there, I don't think there are uh, plans uh, for it. Will there be a coffee maker, that type of thing? Uh, I would imagine there will be. It 
will not be used as any kind of an apartment as a, as a residence. It's for the comfort of the guests. Um, and the board can certainly um, feel comfortable from our point of view in uh, putting a, a restriction uh, that it not be used as a separate dwelling unit. I don't think it's necessary because you'll have that in your decision and then the decision will be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, but if you wanted to have a covenant recorded, we'd be happy to uh, provide that as well. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bob. Uh, no, no specific questions, just, just regarding, um, just for clarification for the CONCOM. So they mentioned that it was an there was an attached garage and they didn't mention the detach. Is that just a typo? Um, a good catch. We didn't catch that. Okay. If it refers to, uh, you know, we could have attached the garage and then there wouldn't have been a need for a special permit on account of that. But the plan that they review had the detached garage. It's, so. it's a detached garage. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Mary. No questions. Okay. Uh, issues were already addressed, so public comment. Any question, comments, or concerns from any members of the public out there tonight? All right. Not seeing any. I do have one other. I, I, I realize it's not so much a zoning issue, but um, what is the provision for fencing the pool? Safety purposes. So it'll have a fence enclosure? Um, from what I understand from the grand saloon is the landscape architect. When not in use? I mean, uh, what does that mean? I guess I'd have to know exactly what that was. Uh, my name is Michael McGrath. I permit pools all the time, or I draw uh, pools. And basically, you can buy a pool today that basically has a cover. And so if it's not in use, the cover uh, you close the pool and the cover is supposed to be strong enough that tots, small children don't fall yeah. through. What about large children? <laughs> uh, I won't go there because I'll say the polit politically wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anything else, Ken? No, that's All it. Right. Anything else from any other members? <laughs> go ahead, Jim. It's not going to affect my support. I'm just curious if there's any plan to reclaim any of the old materials in the house with the new one? Um, well, Charles could speak to that. I know the answer is, is, uh, is yes. Um, some of the um, flooring, mm -hmm. uh, is it mantles? Um, primarily the wood, the woodwork. If you can, we're going to have to investigate it to see what condition it's in, but whatever flooring you can use would be great. Anything else from the board? I have one more. Scott, go ahead. Just, just to dig into that, that pool cover just a little bit, is there anything in writing that, that, that protects that, that safety measure? I mean, or is it just a theory somebody's having? I've never heard that before once. Well, there has, I've, I'm not familiar with it. Well, I mean, obviously, we have to meet the state building code, right. um, and it should be part of uh, any permitting. And, uh, and of course, the board wants to So you'd have no ob uh, objection to have some kind of clarification in the decision that there would have to be some some kind of language from from uh, uh, an authority, the building uh, department, that would support the theory on, on the safety of the cover. I don't mind that. Or the other thing we can do is uh, I, th I think the board is probably prepared to vote this tonight. You can vote it. Um, it won't be uh, filed. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to hold this you up. Seems to be the, this seems to be the type of thing that. Uh, that a knowledgeable, someone more knowledgeable about it than I am, right. ought to be able to get this an answer on it and just uh, give it to Noreen very quickly. Would pool must comply with state co building code be yeah. sufficient? Works for me. I'd say so. Works for me. It's up to the building commission. Yeah. Right, anyway. right. 
So I certainly I'd, understand your concern. Yep, I'd be mm -hmm. happy with that. Anything else from the board? No, I guess I so I assume they'll also reclaim all the copper. It's the first house I've ever seen with copper screens. I mean, all the screens on, on the upper floors are, I've just never seen copper screens before. All the downspouts are copper. The entire like roof line is lined <laughs> with it. That's the way they made it. I just, I just, I was, I was just sitting there adding like up the, <laughs> there's a lot of copper there. It's Kelly, beautiful. You're, you're on television and, and a lot of people are listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that then, huh? All right. There is a caretaker, however. Ooh. Who's watching out for that comment? There you go. All right. Anyone like to make a motion to close the hearing then? So moved. Second. All right. Motion made by Scott to close and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. All right. What would be the board's pleasure? So motion to approve with conditions. I'll second it. Motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and second by Scott. Findings? Uh, 24068A8, 240-3C, 240-216, not substantially more uh, detrimental. Um, existing house has been existed in 1925, and it's just uh, outlasted its sustainability, uh, and they need to do upgrade. They need to raise it. They can't salvage it. Original house was 11 bedrooms. We're going to be reducing that to five. There was a two-car detached garage uh, proposed with living space above. The property will still be a single-family property. Upgraded septic system, Bob. Upgraded septic system. The new house will conform to uh, the setbacks and then the Gansett uh, community. That's 20 feet. Did you say setback? Yeah, on the setbacks. And, setback. and those will be 20 feet. Uh, Stated that it was a detached garage. It was a detached. We should um, list the, the heights for the boathouse or bathhouse or however you're going to refer it. No habitable. Yeah, no habitable space, and also that that uh, dock is leased land. Upgrade on the pier, pier house. Yeah, upgrade on it, which is the boathouse or bathhouse. And I don't know how you want to refer to it, Noreen. It's it's referred both ways. So maybe just put a hyphenation on the. Our testimony also is that um, they are going to try to reclaim materials in the home. We have a uh, certificate of appropriateness from. Historical Commission, and that is dated March 18th, 2021. We have an order of conditions and mitigation with uh, Conservation Department. Uh, two letters of support, both are Butters, which uh, also had uh, connections to the area. It was their family that owned the original uh, home. Uh, make a finding that the pool uh, was going to have a cover installed uh, to meet safety codes, but the pool will have to meet whatever the safety requirements are for the town and the state. And that the spa would be encompassed with that pool, that pool um, note. Right? Yeah, and we'll, we can condition that so it meets it on the pool. Uh, New water service. New water service for, for the, uh, so there'll be separate water services, one for the house and one for the detached garage with the living space above. Addressing. Yeah, they'll have to address it. I mean, we can put in the conditions that section 99, they didn't suggest in here what the addresses are, so whatever they use to suggest the address. All right, that does it for Findings, How about both of the immediate abutters filed letters of support? Yeah, we have that. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. My apologies. No, it's always good to double check. Our findings per plans. Uh, it'll be a five bedroom, uh, single family property with a five bedroom improved septic system. Uh, there will be a living space above the garage. Uh, condition that that not be, um, there we go. yeah, a, uh, an apartment. Also condition that the property stay as a single family property. A condition that the that the pool meet the safety requirements for the state and the town. But we should put in the findings that it's a four acre parcel. Times. Construction times. 
Yeah. There's nobody around them. Yeah, it's just, it's actually, it's the two neighbors, so. Oh, yeah, and they have full support. They're both for it, yep. so I don't think we need to I withdraw. put construction hours in, as he. I mean, there's plenty of room for. I mean, they're constructing one out there now, yeah, and you don't plenty need to room for room. that. Yep. Now, I bet you there'll be a lot of bucks there. Uh, condition that uh, every, all the referrals didn't meet CONCOM, water department, the engineering comments. Section 99.1 for fixing the numbers. Uh, we don't have a, a video of CONCOM in the plans. It's not there. Uh, just put in a finding that, that the CONCOM referral mentioned a attached garage versus a detached, which we assume was a type of. Now, uh, with the boathouse, if it is in need to be reconstructed, you want us to maintain the same footprint? Same footprint and also the same restriction on the boathouse. It's not, it's not going to have uh, habitable space. Her plans. Right. Anything else? No, it's a great property up there. Beautiful. All right, so if that does it with findings and conditions, that was a motion made by Bob, seconded by Scott to approve with conditions. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Attorney Yaman, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for taking it up and finishing it. Up next, we have application 38 21, Scarduzio, trustee, 192 Meadow Neck Road in East Falmouth. Do you, do you want to take um, the one we took out of it? Because they're it's old. They've been waiting for oh, some wax. Yeah, so let's go there. Yeah. You know what? My apologies. Well, because Scott's here, and I said that we would take up uh, the continuation once Scott came. Uh, so we'll take a so motion to take application 50 20, Villages at Brick Kiln, LLC. All right. So. Oh, do, do we need the motion because I... Well, we took it out of order, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, motion to take up application 50-20, Village at Brick Kiln, LLC, 511 Brick Kiln Road in West Falmouth. Voting members on this are myself, Ken, Bob, and Scott. Yes, sir. All right, so I made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You may want to note that... Right, so right. Yeah. So we, we did run into that quorum issue earlier, Attorney Glenn, and I'm just getting this all. I, I couldn't hear. Oh, sure. I'm just getting this all on the record at the moment. We did run into that quorum issue earlier in the evening. Scott has arrived, uh, but Ed uh, is not in attendance tonight. In the, if, in the future, uh, Ed would have to submit material saying under that under the Mullen rule that he's reviewed everything okay and he'd be able to vote on the project so and just for the record I had missed a meeting and I have reviewed all the videotapes uh, and information on the meeting so I'll be taking advantage of the Mullen rule all right. and as we know Ken oh, is I will not be on. Ken won't be here in the future so you're looking at myself Bob Ed and Scott uh, I suppose if we have to have a full a full five voting members. We could go back into the records and just make sure that Mary and James <coughs> have contributed and have been in attendance. I think they've both been at all the I think they, have. I think, the I think they yeah. have, but I, I just want to get it all out there right now on the record so everyone understands going forward. <coughs> I think Ashley thought James may have missed one. May so have missed he would one. be eligible to review that. All right, so, so he would be eligible for the Mullen rule as well in the event that he did miss uh, Good old Mullen rule. Hearing. Right? Coming to save us for this one. All right. So, so I, I appreciate the explanation and clarification there. Yeah. So begin. Go ahead, Attorney. Glenn. Okay. All right. <clears throat> My name is Paul Glenn. I'm here for the applicant. Village at Brick Kiln Road. It's a 40B application for 28 affordable, originally for 32 affordable um, homes and now 28 total homes. This is our fifth meeting um, that we had. The last meeting we were here May 6th. I talked about at that meeting the location and the density and how it fit into the um, the town's requirements for affordable housing, that both for density and location. Talked about what a great job Mike Baselli has done 
presenting all this information. There's a lot of detail and how hard Mike Solomondo, the applicant, worked with the neighbor. There's only one neighbor, really, to um, work out to make sure that they were satisfied with, the, with that. Last meeting, the peer review person, Brian Yurgation, was here. He submitted a detailed report on the plan. Um, and um, Mike Baselli has worked with Walter Hermanen, Hermanow, I think we pronounce it, to, uh, as Michael says, and he'll be happy to go over it, he answered every issue that um, Brian raised in his memo of May 6th. Mike has submitted, Mike Borselli has submitted um, revised plans that deal with each one of Brian's concerns. One concern that Brian felt that he wasn't qualified to talk about was the, um, was, one was the stormwater drainage system, and that's why we had Walter Herman now. Um, two, two things he, he didn't. Uh, Walter Herman now is the, submitted a stormwater drainage system plan, and he feels that he has answered all of the issues. When we heard that Brian couldn't be here tonight, we decided not to have Walter come down from the Boston area um, to come tonight either. But he has submitted a report to you that answers all of Brian's, the peer review person, engineer, all of his issues that he raised in his May 6th letter to us. Another issue was raised about the water pressure in the area and the applicant, Mike Salamando, just by the way, he's a um, civil engineer. He's a man of many talents. He's here tonight. You left your dog at home. <laughs> you left your dog at home. I think we're gonna miss the dog actually from making a special appearance um, there. But Mike has talked to uh, four fire departments and he hired a company to go determine what the water pressure is up at the site. And Mike would like to make that presentation tonight to you if you have any questions about that. He submitted the report from wind companies, I think it is, that, that looked into the water pressure there. And he submitted his own memo uh, along with it. So you might have that. Now, another, I, I think we're answering everything that was brought up at the last one. Another issue that was brought up by a couple of members was the, um, a second access to the property. And um, the new plan shows on that, that where a second access could be, about 400 feet from the street and about 400 feet from the end of the, um, the end of the development. And I submitted a letter to the board where I said the applicant would be happy to um, accept a condition where he would be required to grant an emergency access to any development to the east of him that now is being contemplated by the, by the YMCA, where they could where they would have an emergency access over the village at Brick Kiln and suggested to you that if you put a similar condition on anything the Y did, that they would grant village at Brick Kiln an emergency access, it would seem to be, um, it would seem to be a good relationship to, for, both, for both properties there. And, um, and, th and that's something that can be easily accomplished um, by Michael when he deeds out the properties, just reserving the right to grant easements to abutting properties there. Yeah, that, that would be easy to accomplish. I'm here. Um, I, I'm not sure, would you like to start with Mike Baselli to answer, um, to tell you the questions that he answered? We don't have Brian here tonight to agree or disagree with whether um, 
Michael answered all the questions the way he's going to say he did. Um, and then we have um, Mike Salamando, the applicant, that would be happy to talk to you about the, um, the water pressure. Okay, um, do you have a preference? I guess we can hear from Mr. Barcelli first. Mr. Barcelli. Good evening. For the record, Mike Barcelli, Film of Engineering. I represent the applicant. Um, I think you've uh, reviewed the drawings in, in detail at the previous hearings. And at, at the May 6th hearing, um, the peer review uh, engineer's deficiency uh, uh, letter had uh, limited the um, final comments to a handful of things um, that we addressed, uh, most of which were calculations that he wanted to review for the septic system. Um, so the calculations for the septic systems were submitted so that he could review them and check them. Uh, we made some minor uh, changes to um, drainage piping systems that he commented on. Uh, so over the course of the five uh, uh, hearings, and I think there were three different reviews from Mr. Yergesian, um, we addressed every issue that he raised um, between myself and Walter Hermanau. Uh, I've, I've never... The, drawn a more detailed, comprehensive plan in my career. Um, uh, we're, we're a small firm, and um, on some level, it was nice to have another set of eyes um, in Mr. Negation to look over all my design. So I, I, I think we've satisfied him. Um, I, we, we submitted the plans, I think, on um, Tuesday, last Tuesday, so it was like nine days prior to tonight. So I'm, I stand by, and I expect that Mr. Yergesian will be satisfied when he does have a chance to review the most recent re, uh, revised plans. So there really isn't a lot of more I can tell you about the plan changes. That you've seen them all, <coughs> other than technical aspects that I, did, I wouldn't want to bog you down with tonight, unless you have specific questions. All right, let's, let's see if anyone does have any specific questions. Questions for you, James? Anything? Scott, I just have one about the water. Um, I guess I'll wait for Mr. Salamander to come up, Tim. Oh, do, wait, waiting for him. Well, he's the one that's going to answer the the water question, the pressure oh. questions, I guess. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll wait, wait for him. Wait yeah, for we'll him. wait for him. But I do have a question. All right, Ken. No. Um, well, I guess the only thing that I don't recall if it was addressed the wildlife corridor. Is, we're not proposing any wildlife quarters, and I, I believe Mr. Glenn asked for waivers from that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the entire uh, property is surrounded on all sides, with the exception of the Christ Lutheran Church to the east by uh, open space. So there's, there's woodland surrounding the entire property. So there's no, there were no provisions within this specific lot to allow for a wildlife quarter. So that is a specific waiver. One thing I could point out, since I'm, I'm here, just to clarify, the uh, there was a concern about uh, emergency access because the cul-de-sac is longer than 500 feet. Um, a, a waiver was requested, but as a mitigation measure, we had the opportunity to provide, um, through this section of the development, a 20-foot wide uh, water main easement, which also will serve as a uh, linkage to the uh, land owned by the Christ Lutheran Church. It would be graded and uh, in a way that it would satisfy emergency access for the fire department. Uh, it could be um, the width that they require as a gravel road. And it's in a place that then uh, in that position from brick kiln to it is about 400 feet and from it to the cul-de-sac is just under 500 feet. So if that were utilized, then there's no place on this roadway that would be more than 500 feet. Anything else, Ken? No. Nope. All right, Bob. 
No, I just want to know about Mercy Act. I think it's a good solution. All right. Mary. I have no question. All right, and no questions for me, so I think we're all set with Mr. Baselli. Thank, Thank you. you. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Mike Solomondo, I'm the applicant. And I wondered if uh, everybody got uh, uh, the memo that I sent. We did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, well, there was, you know, there was some concerns that, that were set out with the with the uh, with the pressure of the water. Uh, uh, and uh, what I did was we uh, I hired Wind Water, Cape Cod Wind Water, and they went out and. Uh, on 525-21, uh, did a flow and pressure test at 485 Brick Kiln Road, which is right across the street from the project. And um, the hydro test, uh, I, uh, I, I sent you a sample of it or a, a copy of it. And the test results were the static pressure was at 69. And the residual pressure was at 59. That's when they opened the valve afterwards and, uh, and, uh, and, let the, and let the water flow. That's how much it drops, and it drops down to 59 pressure. Okay, that's a pressure drop of about 14.5%, okay, and the gallons per minute, per minute were measured about 1,110 PSI. So the following week, I, um, I, I got the results, okay, and, and then I, I called uh, the Falmouth Fire Department, and I, you know, and what we did was, uh, they were kind enough, uh, one of the deputy chiefs called me back, and uh, and we discussed it, and I and I, you know, and I told them the results. And uh, uh, first of all, if, if we looked into the hydro, well, they said that's a green hydrant. So, you know, you go up in the NFPA, all right. And the NFPA is, and I not only spoke with the, uh, I not only spoke with the uh, with the Falmouth Fire Department. I done a lot of work in Quincy, the city of Quincy. I talked to them. Now their parameters are a little bit different because they have high rises and, and you know, they, they're a whole lot uh, densely more packed and the, the buildings are higher. Their pressure is, but uh, their pressure requ uh, uh, needs are, are much greater. But um, why else to talk with the, um, with Situate, or who has, would be, would love to have what we have down here in Falmouth and uh, in, a, in Marshfield. And they all kind of had the same general consensus about NFPA and their standards. So it's mostly a wish list or, or what we, they'd like to have as an optimum, is, but uh, not every town meets all their requirements. But in this particular case, according to the deputy chief, okay, uh, uh, here in Falmouth, this section of Falmouth has is, is got some of the best pressure in town. And we have the pressure in the town was it, uh, uh, the pressure there at this particular green highway was 1,110 pounds, okay? Uh, that's, that's good if you look on, according to NFPA, I, I don't want to go over all these numbers and stuff, but on the NFPA 1 or in, in, in NFPA 101 and NFPA 291, okay? That's a, that's a good hydrant or that's, ex, uh, that's good pressure. Excellent pressure would be 1,500, but Good, it's good enough for the for the green hydrant, and then, and then when we look at this, um, the the static pressure is at it, 69, the drop to 59. Well, there's if it goes below 20 psi, then you have some we have some problems with contamination, or or there's an issue that can be brought up with contamination. We're well in excess of that, of the 20 percent. And what I did was I I. I copied those uh, those sections and I sent them to you, and kind of like circled some of those things that so you guys could see without having to look through it. The NFPA is, is pretty long. I also at another point found, but I did not send this one to you under section 18, 4.4, uh, 4.45, 1 dash 2. Okay, I know it's. That a thousand gallons, you know, is is what their is what their standard is for a thousand gallons per minute is what their standard pressure for homes under five under five thousand square feet, which all these homes are. 
So, I mean, we looked into it according to, um, you know, according to the, the deputy fire chief here. Uh, again, it's some of the best, best pressure in town. Scott, do you have any other? See if we do have any questions. We'll start from this side. Mary? No questions. Philip? No, I'm not on the fire suppression. I just have one question. I, I know you're going to do an allotment for landscaping for houses, but do we get any kind of an idea of what the minimum would be required for them to do with that allotment? Well, like it, so many trees, so many. Well, we get for outside the allotment. Uh, of, I put I'm putting the trees in. There's going to be at least one. You know, okay, I just want just just so we have a better and easier way when we're doing the decisions, so we know exactly what's. Yeah, being I, put in for landscaping on, on, you know, some of these projects, I'm sure you would do it this way, but some of them present really well on these plans on paper and then they're built and we think, oh no, we should have put something in there because we're not even getting the minimum that we thought we're getting. So uh, if we can just get some kind of an idea what the minimum requirement will be on these properties. Sure. Uh, uh, well, I we gave a little, uh, I gave, the you know, the blow up those first, Two, uh, maybe, is it four? Yeah, that'd be great if you just... You know, but, you know, and, and shame on me, because I said that I would bring it to you, I think, during one of the one of the meetings that we had. Uh, yeah, I just... And, and I didn't, and, and I can send you the pictures of... If you could just send something, that'd be before, great. Give us a better idea. Where we've been before, it's like we have footsteps in the snow. I never used that analogy. You can see what we've done by looking at the last project that we've done. But I, I'm kind of like, this is kind of like. This, this was submitted, uh, just so you know, and there's a concept plant schedule with a key and a legend. Yeah, so I, so I know that, but I, I saw that. so on the, because it says concept plan schedule, that's what we've got into a lot, is that they show up on a concept plan and then they don't show up on an actual plan and then the answer is, well, that was a concept plan. We don't, we're not held to a concept plan, so. I was just looking for some kind of minimal of what's actually going to show up on the plan. You know, I'm sure it's going to look great. I just, I've learned from my mistakes in the past with these on landscaping, and I've been burnt so many times that. <clears throat> no, I understand. I, I know, I know. So even if it's just a minimal of what, you can always go over that, but minimally, you know, a couple trees per lot and some shrubs or. Certainly, a, a condition that requires that w it would be acceptable. Well, I'm happy to do that. I just, I, yeah, if, I if mean, you could let us know what the minimum is, then we can just condition well, I, on what that minimum. You can always go over it, but some some memo we submitted in one of the meetings, and I forget which, you know, second, third, for we said that he'd spend a minimum of five thousand dollars in landscaping per home. Yeah. So if we can just get in, it's it's easy to say figures. If we can just get what that would probably bake break down to minimally per home, like two trees, some bushes. I'll you don't have, have to, to be specific. I'll have to get it to you. Yeah, you don't have to be specific on the type, but just we know we get you know six foot trees and some large shrubs. No, that's fine. You could submit it. I just it would really help if you could just send something. We, like we, that. I think the problem. Sorry, to interrupt. Oh no, go ahead. It's that just, when the projects are developed and you're going to sell these as individual lots, correct? So, yes. you know, someone will go out and inspect and look at the building that's put up and then they're going to check the landscaping that should match the plan. And if they don't have a plan, they don't have anything to compare to. So even though you may give someone an allotment, there should be certain standard installations that you're going to do throughout the development so that when someone goes out and checks we can be assured that those minimum plants will be in there and we can do that and it'd be more than minimal but you wouldn't be so specific that you have to have a rhododendron a hydrangea because some people like one no but if you could break it down uh, you know yeah. five foot tree Three foot bush. I mean, I don't really care what the types are. I just yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Just something, yeah. something quantitative. You know, we've seen a lot of these, and, and the plans are that there's trees, and then you end up going out, and there's these little one foot bushes, and we're told we can't do anything because yeah. it was concept plan. And I just, I just don't want to get hit by that again on, on these larger projects. And I'm sure you want to make it look nice, anyways. You got so it. you got it. I mean, 
it's, it's but we just my, don't. We, my best yeah. interest. I know. We I just know don't always see. We just don't always it. see it. So you've got to. But if I got to sell the next house, I got to make sure the one that the buyer next to it looks good. You got to. You got to make it right. Oh, I would love this to be a project that we can use and say this is how you do it. So, <laughs> so anything you <laughs> but can. But I will do. Give you that, and I'll show you where I've been. That, that's the best I can do. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions from the board, Scott? Yeah, I have, I have my water question. Oh, that's now. right. Yeah, um, you said you were at 69 at the hydrant yes. with wind water, right? Yeah. And uh, when they opened up, it dropped to 59 immediately? Yeah. Okay, so do you have a calculation over the distance? Do you have pressure at the distance of where? Was that a calculated distance to your first hydrant? Uh, do, you have the, uh, yeah. do you have the printout of the? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, is that a, did the Falmouth, when you discuss this with the Falmouth uh, uh, assistant chief, yes. is he satisfied with? with yes, the, by the, NFPA, 25 is acceptable. So, so we have documentation from him about that conversation that he no. was satisfied with it? No, he just called, no. Okay. No. I, I, I didn't, no, don't, I, I don't him. have a written conversation with him, no. But I checked with, uh, not just him, I checked with. I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't care about other towns. I mean. Oh, I, I understand, but I just wanted to get a general consensus just so I, I knew that when I got up here and I would be speaking to you, yeah. that I'd have at least not one authority, but uh, several yeah, authorities. Well, I understand, and, and my, my, ma my major concern with it is that it's so dense in that neighborhood that if you have more than one houses uh, uh, that, that become on fire, I mean, you're going to need a lot of water for houses that are literal feet away from each other. I just want to make sure the water pressure, we have documentation that he's satisfied with, with all of that. Well, it's supposedly the, one of the better areas in town. I don't like words like supposedly, but yeah, okay. Well, I, I was taking his. I was I taking his. I was taking his like word like for it. If I, now, he now has access to these pressure test results, right. we could ask him. Absolutely, to I don't comment. think it's a big to deal to ask. Get a comment we, can, we can get confirmation oh, from the that, fire that and the yeah. water superintendent. Sure, that works. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Scott. Uh, any questions from anyone else? Okay, anything? No? All right. Mr. Salamando, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, just because I have to say it, but uh, public comment, any questions, <coughs> comments, or concerns? I know that everyone else out here is either part of this project or the next one coming up. No? All right, back to the board. So I, so what? how much more do we need on this? Well, the um, I guess the biggest issue we have tonight was that the peer engineer isn't finished reviewing the stuff that was submitted. So they asked some of it, but they said that they would, it would take them about a week Think is it is not what his letter said. No, in a week, I think so. and then you'd have to present to us. You want that, and you want some minimal landscape. Minimal landscape. Minimal landscape. Yeah. Uh, information. And then were there some perimeter trees that you were going to protect in certain areas? I, you refer back to my, my letter, February nine. Sorry, Mr. Salamando, if you could speak at mm -hmm. the microphone. That's something I'm sure FCTV will to unlearn lecture me on again, because though. we're in person now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in the hall? There's, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna stake it. I well, I wish we could. I tried to look for a place because, but w w the places where I thought we could save some of it, uh, around uh, house number 21, there may be some that we can that we can save. But the trouble is the the grading. When you rip up the when you when we have to transfer and do the grading, we're gonna we're gonna kill some of these roots. And if we if I refer back to February February uh, 9th's letter, I, uh, I, you know, and it's only through my experience that I'm telling you you folks this on, on a site such as this. I, you know, I found in the past between roadways, utilities, electrical cables, gas, sewer, septic, road drainage, infiltration tanks, roof drainage galleys along with foundations, water lines, driveways, root systems, you know, it taking, a, you know, you try to save, but if, if you, if we leave some of these trees in, okay, trying to fit them in, all right, and try and save them, we're going to wreck the roots. They don't always go where you think they're going to go, and you're going to kill that tree. It doesn't die right away, may even, it may even bloom, but when you take it out with a crane, 
you, you can clear an acre for between 2,500 and 4,800 bucks a, 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 an acre when you forest a tree, when you just clear cut, all right? But you're gonna take one tree down and that one tree, all right, when you have houses around with the crane and the man, manpower and everything else that you go with it, it costs just as much for one tree and that's gonna be on the homeowners. That's the only thing, that's the only reservation I have. I'd like to save trees. I, I'd, I'd save as much as I can, but Mike's got the grading in there. We have to keep to the grading to keep all the drainage, to keep up with the calcs that we got. Uh, it's, I did it, and, uh, and, I, and I learned to regret it. I, if I could, I would. Uh, it, I saved money, it makes sense. But I, it, it won't make sense if the tree dies. Hopefully, uh, everyone will opt into your proposed landscaping plan then. I hope so. And I can highlight some areas on the site plan that I can just show that we do have an opportunity to save trees. So I was going to say, I mean, minimally great, where yeah. the town is in a butter to the property, yeah. and some of that land is in conservation, held by conservation. Yes. Um, they we're will, off that anyway. They, they will expect to probably walk the perimeter with uh, their arborist to make sure that the tree, any trees that are on that property line are jointly owned by the town. So, you know, you're going to have to get permission from them. They're going two feet in the property line. Yeah, uh, if you look on the plan, we've we've got a limit of work along the entire perimeter. Um, it's highlighted in blue, um, and we've designed all of our regrading and our, uh, our retaining walls such that they're inbound from the property line, a minimum of uh, uh, five feet in this case. And these proposed contours are in, uh, inbound. So the trees that are on the common boundary will be sufficiently separated from any regrading to not be affected. We we did that by design. And on the on this side, on the north side, um, we were able to maintain the existing grades. So there's no regrading on on this side. That's and in this corner, these trees would be retained. And then over adjacent to the Donnellan family, all of this topography um, is uh, unaltered. So there's, a, there's a, a, a big area here along this common boundary that the trees can be retained. So can you put in a limit of work that shows that those areas where trees are gonna be preserved? Um, I, I am showing the limit of work on the plan as it is. Does, it, does that count the... Um the root systems that Mr. Salamando talked about, I mean, if you've got root systems that are longer than two feet that are on the property line that are owned by the town, then aren't they subject to exactly what you were talking about? The cutting, the, the cutting inside the two feet line. I didn't say you were grading with a, another five feet. And then um, an inventory of the trees, this is all scrub oak. There's, I mean, it's not, there's, there's not no like valuable woodland specimen trees out here. It's all, you know, six inch to eight inch um, scrub oak tree. So there's nothing. You're of, talking about the town's trees? Or uh, um, all the trees, all over, all over this prop. You know, if you walk through this, you, um, it's, it's what you, you typically see in the, in the woodlands around here. There's no, there's no large diameter trees. Any other questions from the board? So I'm just I'm just thinking maybe we can condition the project so you do have that walk with the town arborist around the perimeter just to identify those trees. Okay. Anything else from the board? No, just uh, we, maybe normally we can get confirmation from the fire department just on the figures that were done for the pressure test. And the water superintendent. The suppression and the water superintendent. All right. We will be looking at a continuance, Noreen. I'm, <coughs> I'm looking. <laughs> it's an awfully full July schedule and into August that we have. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Th the next meeting shouldn't be very long. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get those things to you ahead of time. And the, and the peer review engineer won't have to comment uh, about 
the avarice or the um, water pressure thing. Um, so it, it could be a very short meeting before you, you close the hearing. <coughs> and um, I, I'm in another com committee um, meeting on the 8th. I can't make that. Mr. Baselli cannot make it on the 15th. Um, we're, I, I know it's a long shot. We're hoping for the first. Right. We're, we're also not meeting on the 15th. And the first, we have two continuations, one, two, three, four, five new hearings. You never make the first. No. What's that? It's too much in the first. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Attorney Glenn. You said this. You said you had a community meeting on the eighth. The and Mr. Baselli isn't um, available on the fifteenth, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'm First of all, well, it's a lot. That's going to be a long meeting. Right. We're also not meeting on the fifteenth. Um, oh. We have to after that. Well, I would. Yeah. I mean, really, the first date you have open is August 5th because the other hearings, I mean, not to not get you on sooner, but there's so many cases those nights that you would be here till midnight. I mean, it, it makes for an awfully long night, but could we notice this hearing for six o'clock just to? On which? I, I'm just throwing it out there. Any any date, I guess. I think the problem is there's just too many other. Yeah, there's there's so much. You just I mean, what happens by the time we get to the end of the night, 11:30? I mean, these would extend. I mean, at that point, you can hardly look at the time. Maybe we have to go August. Yeah. I'd, ha I'd hate to do it, but. But I would. I mean, I look at the schedule. I, I know. I mean, it's, it just it's, tells you everything you need to know by I, looking I've, at it. I've never seen our schedule go no. on to the second page. Every like single week. We're, we're jam-packed. <laughs> you, you did, Ken. <laughs> just in time. Yes, you jumped the ship. Summer. You notice you got off in the summer. I mean, even even the 29th full, and then we'd be looking at the, the It's just, fifth, it's, it's nothing to do with the scheduling, and then you have to... I want to make sure Mr. Baselli's here because we need him. And there's at least six music. every night. Yeah, no, there is. I think August is the best, and this is a cancellation. I expect that. I think that's what we're looking at. So, what was the date, Doreen, for August? August fifth. I didn't even look that far ahead, but if my other meeting is August fifth, I'll get it continued to the to the twelfth, I guess, if uh, if we need well, we to. We could put that case on first if that's helpful. Oh and sure. So mm. Folks are not waiting. And yeah, a, a, Attorney Glenn, I, I've in my all yeah. my years on the board, I've never seen. No, a I schedule understand. This and you're all volunteers. You, I you know, know I, any board you get involved with, I, I know everybody's given their time to the As town. Especially right. during the summer, usually things slow down, but I mean, we are, yeah. we are jam packed for sure. Well, I'm, not, I'm not praying for a recession, but that's what would make the town a lot more quiet, wouldn't it? That'd be the bad <laughs> yeah. way to, that'd be the wrong way to quiet things down. Yeah. Well, right. While we're on the topic, how are we looking in terms of deadlines? Do we need any sort of extension? Uh, you will Since we're going that far out? Probably need to have an extension. Oh, what do we have, where's that? <laughs> this is the big file. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try to get it back. Or on the front there. I know where it is. Uh, Sorry, Michael. Uh, oh, 30 days. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. You should probably get one signed in. Yeah. Attorney Glenn, just out of an abundance of caution, I'm sure that you'd agree to uh, signing any sort of extension that might be necessary. I, uh, I can't tell at we'll, this very we'll, we moment, will. but okay. Uh, I don't know what the new rules are after June 15th. Uh, you're back to the old. The new rules are the old rules I after think, June I 15th? The, I'm struggling with the, the old, same thing right the, now. We're back to the old rules. Yeah. All right. So, All right, just, so. Yeah, to be on the safe side, it's probably best. And at least in the meanwhile, we can make sure that August if 5th? there's any outstanding issues, we get those resolved. We're done. All right, so then I'll make a motion to continue to August 5th. Second, Mr. Dugan's motion. All right, thank you. So motion to continue to August 5th made by Bob and seconded by Scott. Uh, voting members are myself, Ken, Bob, and Scott. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Attorney Glenn, thank you to you and your team tonight. We will see you. Thank you. Unfortunately, thank you. August 5th. I wish we could have done something better. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who knows? You may be on another committee. You may get to challenge again. All right. Up next, we have application 38-21, Scarduzio, yeah. trustee. Pretty good selection. 192 Meadow Neck Road in East Falmouth, requesting a special permit to allow an attached three-car garage exceeding 900 square feet in size. And for this application, the voting members will be Scott, Ken, myself, Bob, and Mary. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is oh, Eric. Sorry, we, I, we just, need to read oh, everything into the yeah, record just first. semantics. Sorry. I'm unfamiliar so, with the process. So application 38-21, uh, Thomas J. Uh, Scatuzio. Trustee, 186 Metternick Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-23G1 and B of the Code of Falmouth to allow an attached three-car garage exceeding 900 square feet in size on subject property known as 192 Meadow Neck Road, East Falmouth. Uh, for referrals. Application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. 192 Meadow Neck Road is a public right of way in this area. The applicant has an approved driveway permit on file with us 2021-8 uh, and has filed the required bond. Two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from appropriate departments. Three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property abutters or public right of way. Four, dry wells for the roof are included in the proposed project. Five, we recommend the following condition. Upon completion of construction, the applicant shall post the address for this residence per subsection 991, affixing of legible numbers, time limit for compliance. Uh, the applicant has included the required erosion and sediment controls to protect the town right of way as shown in the figure uh, below taken from their driveway permit application. Where the project falls under the jurisdiction of CONCOM, we defer to the CONCOM for stormwater management, construction erosion controls for protection of the resource and buffer areas. Uh, CONCOM issued an order of conditions for the above reference project dated 11-4-2020. I have inspected the limit of work for the property. I have no further comments. Uh, the order of conditions is attached for the file. In the order of conditions are always extremely long. Uh, planning board is no comment. Uh, water, the existing water main must be in the plans as the service is. There is water available from the 8-inch main in Metternich Road. The new water meter will be required to be installed in the proposed home. Health issued a permit for three-bedroom septic on 3821. Pl plans indicate a three-bedroom home being proposed. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. And no letters for against their concerns. Very good. All right, and for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Eric Tolley from ERT Architects, representing the property owner, Tom Scarduzio. Uh, before I begin, congratulations, Mr. Foreman. I'm a little jealous. I just retired from 25 years of community service last 12 of which were as a selectman, and I barely got a handshake on the way out, so. <laughs> you must have did a good job. <laughs> That's what I tell my kids. If you're not making enemies, you're not doing anything. Um, I'm here before you tonight to request a special permit, as indicated by Mr. Dugan, for a three I'll call this a three-bay garage. I don't want to call it a three-car garage, because that's not what it is, uh, per section 240-23.G.1.B. Uh, in all honesty, when I was doing my uh, pre-design research, uh, zoning research for this property, when I came across this provision of the bylaw, um, the language reads garage space for more than two cars if, and I stopped right there because it was never the intent of the homeowner to have a three-car garage, but instead he wanted a two-car garage with room for uh, the boat, which he now keeps at the end of the, at end of the road at the marina. So he'd like to be able to bring it home. and and put it in, the, in this structure. So again, this, this was never intended to be a three-car garage. It was meant to be a two-car garage with boat storage. 
Uh, that was clearly indicated on the plans, but the building commissioner was not comfortable um, issuing that permit without receiving a special permit from this board first. So uh, here I am asking for your consideration. I don't know if, my, if the plans made it up there, but I'm old fashioned. I have the, the paper copies if any of you want to see them, if you don't have them in front of you. Um, but I guess I'll stop and entertain questions. Sounds good, thank you Mr. Stoll. And uh, if I didn't already mention it, I think uh, Mary's voting on this with the regular voting members. Mary, do you want to start us off? I have no questions. Very good. Bob? I have no questions. Ken? So, uh, <coughs> is, I, I, I went out there, I saw, saw the foundation. Um, <coughs> right now, it's excavated under the garage. Are you going to fill it and put a slab in? Yes. Okay. So that was question number one. Question number two is there's, on the first floor, you have something called a clubhouse. Clubhouse. What the heck is that? So the owner of this property is the owner of the property directly to the north. This is intended to be a guest house. There is a pickleball court as part of the project, and the clubhouse is an area for the, the owner and his companion are pickleball enthusiasts. So this is a place to gather with friends, play pickleball, and be able to sit in the clubhouse and watch a pickleball match. I'm not a pickleballer. I don't know, have any idea how exciting the games crazy. are to watch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that first floor clubhouse exits out onto a patio. The patio overlooks the pickleball court. Okay, but this is a separate lot. From it is a separate lot, side. yes. Basically. Yeah, 186 and 192, I believe this one is, are, are separate lots. And the setback, uh, setbacks all conform? Yes. So the only issue is this is that door. third garage door. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Scott. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. James? No questions. My questions were already addressed through Ken. Uh, public comment. I don't see one single person in this room. <laughs> the chairs are all in support. They they sure are. <laughs> Chairman, motion to close. Second. All right, motion closed, made by Scott, second by Ken. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, motion to approve with conditions. Oh, come on, Ken, close it out. Make your last. Sure, motion. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> to approve. Um. Uh, motion approved, made by, I'll, I'll give it to Ken, second by, go. second by Scott. Sure. There you go. Very good. Findings. And then, I guess, uh, find that, uh, Conforms to the bylaw under 240. 240.23 G1B and 240.216. Yeah. There should be some language in it that the, the definition of, of uh, the three car garage not being a three car garage, but the third bay being. Well, I think the bylaw. Does it indicate the size too is. is is a factor greater than 900 square feet. I remember correctly. You're, you're correct. Uh, um, GB is for uh, if the garage is more than 900 square feet or 50% of the right. footprint. I will admit that the, the, the language, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Oh, there's plenty of language in here. The language is a little <laughs> deceiving, be, um, especially for people like me who never intended to house more than three cars, but the, the language specifically says for more than two cars. Yeah. No, there's, we're, supposedly there's a bylaw uh, rewrite being pursued. That's been going on. And it won't help you. <laughs> you are, are you going to the planning board from here? <laughs> no, I'm not. Bridges are built. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think, it, I mean, I don't think there's a lot to find. It conforms to the, to the bylaw uh, under the special permit requirements and uh, helping for the plan. We can put the, we have the concom, whatever conditions. And then on the conditions, all the referrals, including concom for erosion and sediment controls, the water department. Yeah, we've had some issues where conservation doesn't issue a lot of conditions, but engineering. 
defers to conservation if conservation looks at the application at all. So the new default is the soil erosion and sediment control yes. issued by engineering if that should not be covered by conservation. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's under construction and there are hay bales there. <laughs> that works. So, I think we're good. Conservation has been watching this project very closely. Anything else for either findings or conditions? Uh, I guess uh, we normally do the no habitable space. Yep. All right, so if that does it, for one last final time, that was a motion made by Ken to approve with conditions, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Tully, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Right. I thought I was going to sneak in in front of that last Sorry one. About making you <laughs> Almost did. Yeah. It was the eye roll that put If we were on Zoom, end. we'd be here until 10.30. Uh, I wondered if it was. All right, open meeting Friday. items. Voting the minutes for May 20th and June 3rd. We're keeping this or this going in the uh, We're deferring the 3rd, but May 20th. I'll probably keep it for a bit. All right, May 20th, is, May 20th is good. Has everyone had a chance to review? So motion to approve May 20 minutes. Motion to approve made by Bob, second by Mary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Tabling sure. June 3rd. Reviewing the draft decision for application 22-21, Messner, 12 Vernon Ave and Falmouth with a vote anticipated. The voting members on this project are myself, Ed Van Curen, Scott Zelensky, Mary Berry, and James Moore. So since Ed's not here, it'll be the four of us. Does everyone? Does anybody want a paper copy? No. No, thank Good. you. Good. But uh, just to review, uh, we did have some correspondences back and forth between Noreen and town council and who else? Noreen, I'm forgetting someone, I'm sure. Maybe not. Town council chimed in a couple of times. All right, has everyone had a chance to review the decision? I know the last at the last time we were a little stuck on the whole lot coverage issue. I'm not, on that. not on this one, no. Nope. <coughs> Anyone like to say anything or you think we're we're ready for a vote? I think that was all clarified in terms of the lot coverage. Anyone? No? Good for a vote? I'm not on it, so I'm No? I, I, I'm happily sitting back. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> I used to live on Vernon. Scott, <laughs> Scott, Mary, James, anything? I no comments. All right. The Noreen, I was fine with good the draft. Mary, good. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Scott and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. All right. Passes unanimously. Board updates. Is there anything? Board discussion? Well, question, a question about about the what's going on with that recodification? Uh, it's back up again. So we have a meeting coming up. They renewed the contract for the Bob. They were doing the basic review. Um, so the issue of what a structure is should be taken up. at the next one. Yeah. Don't forget. Well, you. I mean, I think as you have a definition of structure. And you have a definition of principal structure. I think the there's some fine tuning that needs to be added to the language so that it's more clear to those of us who use the bylaw all the time and those who are applying. Right. But the, also, as houses now, you know, they are. I've seen some pretty elaborate patios with kitchens on them and everything else yes uh, elevated and so I think there needs to be some clarity that's not a patio that's not paving well I think there's two things I think one is elevated patios versus on grade and then the second part is what is built in right which is as you point out uh, you know some Places have even the huge fireplaces, you start running um, outdoor school. kitchens. Oh, yeah. So a lot of communities are now looking at applying setbacks to 
to those build in, built in items. So again, I would say that's gonna be something that you're gonna to need to add to your bylaw because right. otherwise Fun you're gonna get, people will put those outdoor chimneys in or whatever else and it's gonna be right on top of someone else. Can I share a story about Falmouth zoning and the devil in the details? My parents' first house uh, on Hudson Street has a, had an oversized detached Gambriel garage that was almost bigger than the house. And previous to my parents buying it, uh, the previous owner won in land court because there was a board nailed into the side of the building to the side of the Gambriel garage, and that was the way the bylaw was constructed, written was, quote unquote, attached. So the devil is in the details uh. of zoning. <laughs> <laughs> and it's expanded since then. It does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else from the board? One last item since we're still live on the oh. record. <laughs> There's a little something for you, Kevin. Wow. You want me to look at what's in here? Uh, what the hell? Sure. Anything that can be consumed tonight? <laughs> if, if you want it to be. In certain places, yes. Hey. Hey. My favorite. Excellent. These are great during the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. It's been very kind. Thanks for everything. And uh, these are very nice honors. So, well, if you get on water quality, please come and chime in. Yeah, as much Ken, as you we're want. going to yeah, require supervision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and cooperation, and yes, you can. Help us with anything that we get stuck on. You can come back and opine. Yeah. yeah. As a member of the public. <laughs> yeah. Well, I may submit a letter regarding your outstanding 40 Bs. So. Wonderful. And there's always public meeting comments. And gentlemen, there sure uh, is. there's a plan to comments. be executed no, I understand that. on oh. a car. But I'm not a sure mylar for Helmus. Oh, okay. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> what address is that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Once, yep. Noted. So we do have to. So we will have to. Everyone sign it? We'll have to that sign off, yeah. Is that how much circle? Is it, it is. just the top one or all? I think there's a mylar included oh, there. Okay. Oh, that's at, the, the that's at the back there. Yeah, okay. and I think the mylar is the most important one. If you're all right. Trying to pick one, I don't well, we can all do. You know, we can all do that off the record, I guess. Really all right. But while we're still on the record, Ken, thank you for everything. You're welcome. We can go celebrate very shortly. Okay. And your seat's going to be a big one to fill. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> but you have you have plenty of good people here to do it. We sure do. All right. Anything else? One final time? Anything? I will. All right. Meeting adjourned.